Hello, Internet! The Uncultured Saints. <laughs> uh, uh, we haven't done this in like months. I'm, I'm kind of nervous that it'll be rusty. It doesn't matter if it'll be rusty. Just because no one's going to listen. All, no, all that matters is, 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 is it going to be good or not? Well, and the answer is no. There we go. So, so we're, we're doing just fine. Nothing has changed. So you're saying there's really not a difference between unpolished bad and, and polished bad? There's nothing. Fair enough. No, nope. well, nope. it all stinks. Uh, on that blessed note, uh, we're working our way through the small called articles. We're, we're going to talk about repentance today, right? Yeah, I think we are. How are we all already at part three? The first two parts are super short. Oh, well, I should probably know these small cult articles better. Uh, that's what we're I know we podcast. already went over them, but yeah. Okay. How many different episodes have we done? Uh, five so far. This is the six. Wow. Over the course of? A year and a half. A year plus? Yeah, we're real bad at this. <laughs> we, uh, we're not good at this. Life has gotten crazy and a little bit busy. That's an excuse for old people. You're old. I still have. Uh, I still have uh, to finish up stuff for uh, the catechesis stuff that uh, Sanchez uh, had me uh, do. So that's the busy stuff that comes into play. Are you bragging about not being good at work for higher things on a higher things podcast right now. That wasn't a brag. The humble brag. That was that was no, it's not a humble brag. That's explaining uh, how uh, how busy uh, things get sometimes. Well, I uh, do better. I don't know what to tell you. That's that's I the whole point of better. repentance, right? Just try that harder. Is, and be that sad. is the whole point of repentance, right? Um, so okay, so we're talking about repentance. Uh, Luther's uh, angry. Right, he's uh, he's gotten well, uh, a, a heart attack. Yeah, it's a different mode of communication for him. We're gonna try out um, bitter anger as opposed to <laughs> bitter anger. Bitter anger, exactly. Just disgruntled, angry old man. I love it. Oh, I know he's good. Um, okay, so but he's uh, he's uh, thinking he's gonna die. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's holding uh, holding nothing back mm-hmm. uh, against the against the papists, mm-hmm. right? As he calls it. Um, and so in this article, uh, it's it's interesting. We have, uh, what is it, five, six paragraphs uh, in regards to him explaining repentance. Mm-hmm. And then we have about 35 paragraphs of him uh, Being uh, hammering at away at the Pope and the Papists. The thing uh, is, so it's, it actually still it's, matters today, though. Um, it, it's not just sort of like a guy hated it? another guy a long time ago, and so now we have two church bodies. But it, it's a question of the gospel. It's, it's a question of hope. Um, it, it's, it's this idea, because we just talked about the law, and by just, I mean, several months ago, we talked about the law. Uh, but if the law Well, you is and all, I did, but... If, well, we're pretending people are listening to these one right after another. I don't so they know. just that's a listen lot to, to force it. on a person. They might need months in between episodes too. Uh, when we're talking about the <laughs> law, if that's all there is, it, it's death. Luther says, uh, whenever the law alone exercises its office without the gospel being added, there is nothing but death and hell. That if you're going to sort of end here, that if repentance is simply a question of of law, there's nothing but but condemnation. So yeah, so I'm going through uh, uh, the proper distinction between law and gospel. Uh, with uh, Walther wrote that, and I'm doing that in one of my Bible studies. And uh, for the most part, I I, I, I like what Walther says. He he he, uh, he says some interesting things at, at some points along the way, and I think that he's he's delivering it in a lecture form. So not everything is is a hundred percent exactly how he probably would have wanted it to be said. But nonetheless. Uh, his uh, the whole thesis, i.e., is uh, to be able to distinguish properly about when uh, the law needs to be proclaimed and when the gospel needs to be proclaimed. And I think this plays into uh, into this repentance uh, understanding as well. Um, when does the gospel part come into repentance? Or maybe we should start off, and I'll ask you this, uh, Pastor Goodman. Uh, 
What is repentance? See, it's actually a difference of a question of law and gospel, because if repentance has only to do with the law, repentance can only have to do with turning away from sin. Um, be sad about your past sin. Don't do it again. And that's repentance. But there's no gospel and there's no hope. It actually really only does lead to despair uh, or, or, or Pharisaism, uh, where you're convinced that you have just lowered the bar enough that you can finally actually quit that sin. Um, but if repentance is also born of the gospel, um, then it, it's not just turning away from sin but it's turning toward Christ. And this, I think, might be the, the simplest definition of repentance. Repentance is turning towards Christ for help. Uh, because if, if all we sort of have is, is repentance means quit sinning, well, AA is quit drinking, but it's not necessarily Christian. Uh, there, there are all kinds of advocacy groups without Jesus at all that are sort of bound up in changing an outward behavior. But if, if true repentance is that which saves, well, then that's also not measured in how sad you were in church on Sunday when you mumbled, I, a poor, miserable sinner under your breath, but, but rather in, did Jesus take away your sin? Because it, it is, uh, it, repentance is, is necessary for salvation. Uh, that that uh, Jesus uh, commands that uh, forgiveness of sins and repentance be preached in his name. That if, that if we're going to sort of tie repentance to salvation, it can't just be the law because the law isn't going to save you, right? Right. I mean, the law can offer salvation, um, and it does. I guess you can't really call it salvation, though, because you've earned it, right? When the law says, be perfect as I, the Lord your God, am perfect, um, go ahead and fulfill that, and then you can get this salvation sort of stuff. The, uh, the, the problem is, unfortunately, when we understand uh, uh, the sinner's understanding of repentance, it goes along that line of... Uh, Okay, it, it is it is something that I'm going to do, and inevitably, whether we use this the, this terminology or not, it is uh, an understanding of I have made myself worthy uh, for forgiveness, or I've made myself worthy uh, to be seen as righteous before God. So even if it is my turning away from sin. Um, I'm doing that. I'm turning away from sin. This is repentance, right? Literally, and, and we use that terminology. I think sometimes we go uh, too far down uh, the road with it. But to repent is to be turned. Um, and so, oh, look, I'm, I'm turning away from my sin. Therefore, now, because I've done that and have accomplished that and no longer am uh, diving into that sin, uh, now now I'm worthy of forgiveness. Right, but then you actually have to start to deal with the fact that we fall back into it, um, or, or even just the, the, all the, the um, adjectives we put on our, our repentance, like, are, are you heartily sorry? Are, 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 do you really, really mean it this time? In, in all of those things, there, there's sort of places for, for backsliding, and there's no room for hope. And, and the, the, the theology books, uh, they, they talk about repentance as having two parts, first, contrition, and second, hope. That, that um, contrition, fe feeling sorrow over sin is born of, of being exposed to God's law and hope is, is born of being exposed to God's gospel. And in this present life, because we are still sinners, neither are going to be perfect. Like I'm never going to be perfectly hopeful. I'm never going to be perfectly apart from doubt or despair or sorrow or any of those things. And in the same way, I'm never going to be perfectly as contrite as I ought be uh, because I'm not as sorry as I should be. And you can either sort of do this by saying, well, let's change the standards. And maybe instead of contrition, we'll talk about attrition, which is, uh, it's like, I'm sorry, I'm not sorry enough, um, which is, which is, I had the funny. intention to be sorry. I really wanted to be sorry. Uh, it, it's 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 actually pretty hilariously rude to God. Um, or you can actually just let the thing rest on God and say, "I am not as sorry as I should be, but Jesus is as risen as He needs to be." Yeah, yeah. And so again, can be, uh, you you brought in some of the discussion about how uh, Luther will talk about uh, the Pope. Right and and how he terms it, his terminology, uh, it's harsh. He's about to die, at least he thinks, right? Mm -hmm. So he doesn't care what he says. Uh, the false What's repentance. Your yeah, I I think I'm gonna die soon too. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, he says that it's the false repentance of the papists, right? So that's how he puts it. So we've, we've kind of dabbled a little bit into that, and we'll get it more into it. But kind of going back to, to, to true repentance or, or what repentance actually is, like you said, Pastor Goodman, it's, it's this contrition. So it's the law doing its work upon you. 
uh, to crush you uh, uh, of your sin so that, yes, you do realize that I'm a, a poor, miserable sinner. Uh, and that uh, I deserve nothing but uh, temporal and eternal punishment. This is true contrition. It uh, it is recognizing this. It isn't. Uh, I feel as sorry as I should be, and we're going to get into that in regard to uh, uh, the papist sort of stuff, as Luther calls it. Um, but instead, it's this. Uh, no, uh, the law has done its work upon me and has crushed me and shown me that I'm a poor, miserable sinner. Mm-hmm. Now. Again, if we just do a full stop right there and then say, okay, now what are you going to do about it? Well, okay, my thought would be, oh, it shows me that I'm a sinner, so I got to stop doing that. And then it's me doing the best I can, turning away from it, doing the best I can. Mm -hmm. But that's not good because that's just more law heaped upon law. Mm Mm-hmm. That's that's just I'm a terrified, crushed sinner, and now I'm being told to, to, to be better. Uh, and that's it. There's nothing else there. It's just do better next time. Don't sin next time. Well, there's no comfort in that. And if there is, the only comfort in that is uh, a self-justifying comfort of, yay, I was able not to sin this time. That means I'm getting better. Right. I'm and, really actually repenting. And we, we want that. Like I understand that the desire to sort of say, I'm getting better, that that's I mean, not just sort of uh, of my sin, but I mean, this is anybody who's waging against the war of the damage of sin. So even anybody who's dying, I would rather be getting better than dying. But but it's right. through death that we get to the resurrection. Everybody always wants to say getting better, but now you're starting to add something to Jesus. I, I, and this is sort of at the core of it. Um, I, for us, there's confession and absolution. Like, end of story, right? So, I, a poor, miserable sinner, and I don't say, now, can I look inside of your heart and see if you're sorry enough? Or, or, like, what is enough? How sorry do you have to be to merit the forgiveness of sins that Jesus gives you freely? Um, or, or right. you know, in the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins as long as, and then we, we list out a bunch of stipulations that we're going to say, either biblically or unbiblically, um, are, are real. For example, go forth and sin no more. Sure, like, you should, you should try not to sin. That's good. Sinning is bad. It breaks stuff. But at the same right. time, does that absolution become void if you don't do this? And when Jesus said it is finished, was he lying? Or is there some sort of third part of repentance? Um, so is there confession, absolution, and then the, the, the papists would call it satisfaction, the place where you sort of, you, you apply what you need to to get the absolution. Right. And, um, yeah, that's the third part in regards to uh, how the uh, Luther says the papists do it. Um, actually, uh, they don't even have the absolution in there, and we're going to get to that. Uh, the absolution isn't the second part um, for for them. So that's really interesting. Um, but just w- real quick to kind of go back in regard to the uh, the confession absolution and tying back in uh, uh, CFW Walther's proper distinction between law and gospel, you don't leave a terrified uh, sinner uh terrified in his sin. So if if repentance is uh, based upon us and our work, right, our ability to turn from sin, our ability to do better, then it's law heaped upon law, um, and that can't comfort, and then I'm actually doing it wrong. If I'm telling you, uh, okay, you can be certain uh, you can be certain that God's smiling upon you because now you're not sinning as much. Um, ugh. I, that there's no there's no hope there's no comfort in regards to that. So what is needed once the law has actually done its job and proclaimed uh, that you're a poor miserable sinner and has crushed you uh, and killed you to the point where you, where you're not trying to climb out of that hole with your own good works, but where you're just laying there saying, "Yep, I got nothing. I got nothing left. This is it. It's this is me dead." Then the gospel comes. Mm-hmm. Then the gospel comes in this forgiveness of sins of that raises you out of that grave. And then it's at that point in time, you mentioned when Jesus says, uh, go and sin no more, right? We're talking about uh, situations where uh, uh, women are caught in adultery in the gospels or, or, or other situations where we've got these, uh, these individuals who the law has crushed them. Uh, Jesus doesn't say, okay, go and sin no more uh, until first and foremost, he says, uh, you are forgiven. I, I don't condemn you. Uh, inevitably, I've taken all your sin upon me, and I'm going to the cross for it, and I, I'm going to die for it. Uh, go and sin no more. You're forgiven. Don't live in this sin. Uh, the, cross isn't, uh, the cross isn't permission. 
uh, it's forgiveness. No, and you said this a, a while ago, and it was brilliant, so I stole it because it, it's one of those those times you talked about something other than '90s pop culture, and it was really profound. But you said um, that that when we talk about '80s too, '80s, '80s too, yeah, license to sin is a law word, and so if you think license to sin is born of the gospel, uh, that then you're doing it wrong because license it, it it's never given; it's always sort of earned. There's always a qualification for it, right? Right. And then that's all this, uh, uh, that would be the misunderstanding of repentance. Uh, either, uh, yeah, I, that uh, I've got a license to sin, I can do whatever I want, or I'm the one who's actually uh, doing all of this stuff and, and earning and meriting uh, uh, being worthy of the gospel. Well, that's the ridiculous nature of it. And, and when we hear repentance is only a law word, with no, there's a confession and then there's absolution. There's the terrified sinner who gets comforted by the gospel. Uh, if we don't hear or know repentance in that way, then we are just uh, terrified. We are just thinking of it as a law. And then we are thinking that repentance is something that must be done. We must accomplish it before we receive forgiveness, i.e. we are meriting ourselves worthy to be forgiven. Well, then it's not forgiveness. It's not a gift. It's not free and clear. You you earned it. Mm -hmm. and, and in doing so, you end up making the law a lot smaller. Like, have, have you noticed that inside of all of these things, the law has to start really big to make you know you need Jesus. But after that, it starts getting smaller and smaller as you turn further away from sin, as if you can actually escape it, as if you, you can name all your sins, as if you only do it so so infrequently that you can keep track of it, as if you can uh, do uh, that, that you can commit a sin that is, is uh, no longer the thing that, that is, is so, so awful in the sight of the Lord that it, it requires literally the blood of God to cover, but that, you know, simply saying our father a few times can cover it. And all of these things, we sort of diminish the law more and more where proper repentance, it keeps the law big because you have to die and Jesus dies for you. And so you have to rise because Jesus is risen. Right. And that's, that's how Jesus uh, does it, right? Uh, when, we, when we have individuals who are coming to him trying to be justified by the law, uh, he keeps the law really super big. Mm -hmm. And, and he, it, it, the, the young lawyer who comes and says, what must I do to be saved? And Jesus says, okay, you know the law. You're a lawyer. You want to do this yourself? Okay, you know exactly what to do. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. And now the, uh, now the lawyer is sitting there, like you said. It's on him. He wants to keep the law big initially to, to, to go around proudly saying that he's kept it. But when it actually comes down to fulfilling it, he knows that he can't and he won't. So he tries to lower the bar, asking the question of, but who's my neighbor? Mm -hmm. And then Jesus then again, bumps it straight up to the top of saying, no, no, no. Uh, okay. If you're still trying to justify yourself, um, everyone's your neighbor all the time, 365, 24, seven. Right. Do it. Do, do that and you'll live. And it's actually easier this way. Um, so, so to sort of keep the law big, uh, Luther writes something that's really, really profound in, in the Small Cold Articles. He says, a person who confesses that everything in him is nothing but sin, includes all sins, excludes none, forgets none. Neither can the satisfaction then be uncertain because it is not our uncertain sinful work. Rather, it is the suffering and blood of the innocent Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That just call everything sin and then call everything forgiven. And then you don't have to go through the, the, did I keep this law or not really? Do I have an excuse or a loophole? Can I make up for it? Can I pray hard enough? Can I, can I be sorry enough? Just the whole heap is sin. The whole heap is forgiven. Right. And then as the new man, uh, you can hear, uh, Jesus go, uh, say, uh, go and sin no more, right? Go and go and treat your neighbor as yourself. You can hear that, uh, but you hear it no longer in the way that uh, I, I'm trying to use it to merit myself worthy. Uh, it, ha it has no connection whatsoever to salvation and only has a connection to service to my neighbor. 
Right. Be- well, that's exactly what it's there for. Because if it's born out of fear of sort of losing your salvation, like you can hop in and out of faith by committing sin and then asking forgiveness. Like if every time I sin, I'm outside of faith and every time I ask for forgiveness, I'm in it. You're playing this really dangerous game of hopscotch where you just sort of have to hope you don't die while you're doing something naughty. Um, but but rather this go forth and sin no more. It, it is a perspective. It is a love of the Lord and his law that, that lets you look at it and say, even in the midst of sin, is the law a good thing or a bad thing? Well, the law is a good thing. Right. Is this thing that I fell back into, even though I shouldn't have, a good thing or a bad thing? Well, that was a bad thing. It's when you start to say, this sin that I fell back into is a good thing. That's a dangerous place to be. Right. And then let's let's let the law actually be as damning as it is supposed to be. Let's not try and let's not try and uh, uh, make it any weaker than it is. So that when it says, you know, do all of this, be perfect, and it crushes us to the bone, then okay, it crushes us fully to the bone. Let it, let it do that. Uh, don't, don't try and weaken it in any way, shape, or form. Right. And that's, that's really ultimately what all of this is about. Because when we make the law small, when we, we add to repentance by our works, what we end up saying is that there just shouldn't be as much Jesus. And I'm not okay with that. Right. And, and so keeping the law that that uh, uh, brutal as as it is, maybe that's not the right term. No, to it use, should be but brutal, it is. deadly. Um, then uh, we can say that yeah, the, these works that you're doing, these these uh, these sins, these evil things that you're doing, they're they're not of a Christian. They're not. Mm-hmm. Chris, Christians do not do this. Uh, the new the new Adam does not do this. Uh, the, don't try and justify yourself. Um, don't try and make uh, what you're doing okay. Uh, the new man doesn't do this. The old man does. Uh, and that's why the old man needs to, by daily contrition and repentance, uh, be drowned in baptism. Um, because he seriously and continuously and constantly wants to come back and drag you into all of these old sins of yours. Right. Um, but then let's let's let the law just say, no, 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 no. Let's not weaken this. Let's not say in any way, shape, or form that this can be permission. Let's say uh, fully uh, that the sin you're committing is not a sin that a Christian does. Yeah, because then it can rest in Jesus. And there's, there's hope there. Because if repentance right. is, again, just going to be contrition, you're always running away from something. But if, if mm-hmm. repentance is ultimately born in Christ, then, then there can be a finality to it that lets you actually rest, that lets you actually find comfort, that lets you actually find hope. And that's what this is about. Right. And so then when we get to, if we want to get to it, uh, this, uh, uh, as Luther says it again, the false repentance of the papists, the papists don't have uh, uh, a Rome, Roman Catholicism. Uh, doesn't have a, a, an understanding of there's there's two sides of, of repentance or parts of repentance. Uh, and like we've been discussing, there's the law that crushes you. It's the contrition. And then it's the gospel that revives you. It's uh, uh, Jesus saying, I took your sin and I forgive you free and clear. There's nothing that you need to do. Mm-hmm. You are forgiven. Uh, that is repentance. Uh, so, and, and actually, in that way as well, you can you can speak about it in, as uh, being turned, but no longer is it uh, uh, fancy uh, uh, grammar things with Greek. No longer is it, it is it a middle understanding of the verb. Like I'm the one. Middle is I'm the one turning myself. I'm the one picking up this cup. I'm the one doing this. But it's a passive thing. Christ is the one who's doing it on me. He's the one who's actually turning me uh, with his law from my sin, but then he's turning me to his gospel. Right. And, and then he's turning me to this forgiveness. And we can sins. talk about that without sort of playing with the tenses of the verbs, because you shouldn't change the scripture. So you shouldn't change what the Bible says to, to reflect this, but rather you look at the source of it. And so repent is an imperative. It's it, it said this way, but at the same time, the way it's worked is passive on you. To, to repent mm-hmm. means hear God's word. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, believe it. Repent means hear God's law and find contrition in it and hear God's gospel and find hope. Right. And unfortunately then, and I think this is where, why Luther is, is raging so much as he is, is as you had alluded to, Pastor, um, he, uh, he sees the uh, understanding of repentance from Roman Catholicism as taking away of the gospel, which it really is. So it's it's hiding and obscuring Christ. 
And it's turning uh, the, even this act of repentance into works righteousness. So for, for uh, Roman Catholicism, there's, there's three parts of repentance. And the first is contrition. We've talked about that already. Um, but that contrition is uh, you really, really, really do have to be super duper sorry for your sins. Like, you got to feel it all the way down, deep down into your soul. And if you don't, then there's going to be an issue. But then, as Pastor Goodman said, oh, we realize that oftentimes we can't. So now we're going to lower the bar. And uh, I may not feel really bad, but I want to feel really bad. That's attrition. And they count that as contrition. And as Luther says, none of this makes sense. I don't understand what they're saying. Neither do they when it all gets down to it because they're all speaking gibberish. They're all trying to justify themselves with the law that they can't fulfill. And when you do that, you're just speaking gibberish. Right. And that'll make so Luther f- mad. I mean, that and gout. <laughs> <laughs> right. Gout. And probably the heart attack that he had. Yeah. That would that would make me mad too. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's the first part. Uh, then the second part uh, in regards to Roman Catholicism for uh, repentance is confession. Uh, but it's not necessarily just the uh, being made aware of your sin uh, and uh, being terrified by the law. Um, but it's now I literally have to confess all of these sins. I have to remember them all and I have to speak them out loud to the priests and I must do this. And if I forget one, if it's just one of those little, uh, you know, not really important ones, like I stole a candy bar when I was 12, um, then that one is a venial sin. And then I'm going to get a little extra time up in, in purgatory. But if it's one of those mortal ones, right? One of the one of the 12, however many there are. Wait, I got a timeout. Yeah, thing. a timeout. Just it, the, the, the idea that purgatory is just like not a big deal. This is the place where sir, sins are burned off of you over over right. hundreds, if not thousands of years of torment. And this is sort of the, the comfort. Like, don't worry, guys. If it's, it's not a big deal, you, you might maybe sit in fire for like a few hundred years. Just it's a, it's a, good, it's a, good, it's a good thing. It's okay. Well, it, it's because the understanding is, uh, yeah, okay, Jesus saved you, but you still have to pay for your sins, right? You still, you still have to suffer a little bit. So I understand your sins need to be purged from you, but um, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Your, your purgatory is your baptism. Your purgatory is the death of Jesus. That's where the sins are purged from you. Uh, it, right. it's, it's, it's there. Right, right, Absolutely. Um, the, yeah. So, uh, purgatory, sorry, go ahead, go not ahead. just not. It's, it's you can't say no big deal, guys. It's just going to be a few hundred years in a fiery torment. That's that's not okay. Come on. Well, no, it's not. But that's, that's not kind okay. of how they. It, it's exactly we what get they it, do. No, I know. I know it is exactly what they do because uh, because there's a billion different ways that you can lessen your time in purgatory, uh, right? If if you do uh, if you do. Satisfaction. We're going to get there. That's the third part of uh, uh, of repentance. Uh, if you uh, if you purchase certain uh, things, if you say certain prayers, if you do certain good works, uh, all of these are are uh, lessening your time in purgatory, and you don't have to suffer quite as much. So, you know, it's kind of really up to you, right? How much time do you want to spend in purgatory? How about none time? <laughs> Just. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, that would be great. Yeah. Which is, that's how much there is, because there's no such thing as purgatory. I get your sins um, were purged in Jesus, yeah. Yeah, forgiven, clean. You don't have to pay for them, right? Right, so repentance then is how close can I be to Jesus where my sins are removed from me, not how do I remove my sins from myself. Exactly, yeah. And so then going back to that second part of repentance in regard to uh, Roman Catholicism, it's, uh, yeah, I do have to confess this. Uh, well, again, going back, going back, going back, um, when we had said confession is the, the, the law is actually breaking us so that all that we can say is I'm a poor, miserable sinner and can do nothing. That's proper understanding of what confession is. Uh, for their point, they're turning confession into a work. Mm-hmm. So I, I need to be able to enumerate, say, speak and remember all of my sins. And then once that is done, then I can receive kind of almost maybe forgiveness for it. But first I have to do something something else. And then again, if I forgot some of those uh, smaller sins, it's just extra time in purgatory. If I forgot really big ones, um, 
Uh, like I was saying, that the 12, I don't know how many there is, but it will just say the 12 big sins, if you committed one of those, then you're at risk of, of losing your salvation because you committed one of those really, really, really bad ones. So we can so, talk about sin as if dangerously, that, that it can actually drive you from faith, that, that it's not now that you're forgiven, just sin all you want to. It's not that sin still does damage to your right. neighbor. And it's really hard to rectify with a Lord who, who is crucified and says, now go forth and sin no more. That, that there is such a thing as a sin that will ultimately drive you from the faith. And, and that's why we don't say, yep, just keep on sinning or it's great that you're sinning, but, but rather right. sin is, is crouching at the door. We, we recognize right. it for no. a, a danger. Call, call it evil, because if you live in sin, uh, whatever sin that is, there, there is this constant danger that that sin is going to lead to the next, which is going to lead to the next, which is going to lead to some sort of either a self-righteous justification or uh, forget this whole church thing. I, I don't care about uh, any of it. And uh, screw Jesus. Right. And, and this is a simple task. Like first, if you're all worried about it, you're not there. Um, because the, the, the people who have sort of cross that bridge into no longer caring about the faith and into mortal sin, into unbelief, into the sin against the Holy Ghost, whatever you sort of want to call these things, um, that then what you end up saying is this thing that's going on, is it a good thing or a bad thing? It, it really is just that simple of a test that this sin that you're struggling with, is it a good thing or a bad thing? And if your answer right. is it's a good thing or even just, it's not a bad thing. Right. It doesn't matter. Then we need to reevaluate because this is dangerous place. If, if your answer, though, is it's a bad thing. I'm confident that Christ has saved me from it. Thanks be to God. Right. It, it, I'm still struggling with it. And, and I hope to uh, if I'm honest someday. with myself, I'll, I'll, right, I'll probably fall into it again. Uh, I'm not uh, justifying it. I'm just speaking the reality of, of, of how difficult I, it is to struggle in this. Right. That's a whole different understanding. Absolutely. But that's why we pray, come Lord Jesus. It's not just that we would escape pain in this world, but that we would escape ourselves. Come Lord Jesus, return before I fall back into this awful thing again. Right. Right. Which, the, uh, again, that kind of goes into how and why Luther's so upset in regards to... Uh, the false repentance of the papists because it ends there in the satisfaction. Mm -hmm. That's the, the term that you, uh, they use. We're probably more used to uh, term penance, right? Um, but it is this, okay, now you have to do these five things, right? Say 12 Hail Marys and five Our, Our Fathers and drop a nickel in the offering plate. And then you're fine, nickel. right? Yeah, well, maybe more than a nickel, right? Uh, dime. Um, sins are but then it, cheap. <laughs> sins are no cheap, blood of right? Jesus, well, talking, just a dime. Not, not, with, no, that, not with gold or silver, but with the holy and precious blood and the innocent suffering and death of Jesus, unless it's a dime. Listen, all, all I commit are the venial ones that don't really matter. Uh, so that's why it's only a dime. <laughs> you make Jesus sad. I do. That's um, why Luther's mad. Obviously, no, obviously I'm joking, but... Um, Again, for the small ones, quote unquote, small ones, uh, the satisfaction isn't that much. Again, it's it's throw a couple bucks in the offering plate, say our, our, our fathers, and you're you're good. Uh, for the, the for the worst ones, you have to do more satisfaction uh, to be in that place. But all of that, any sort of understanding of satisfaction is. That, okay, first I have to be really sorry for my sins, contrition, step one. Then I have to, I have to, I, me, have to be the one who uh, uh, remembers and speaks all of those uh, uh, sins and confess them. And then I have to do the satisfaction. Once I've done all three of these things, then I can know that I'm worthy to receive forgiveness of sins. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you see the problem there? There's none Jesus. There's no Jesus. None, Jesus. Forgiveness of sins isn't something that Jesus gives free and clear as a gift. It is something that I earn by doing steps one, two, and three correctly. But also then, if I have to do steps one, two, and three correctly in order to merit the gospel, as it wouldn't even be the gospel, in order to merit salvation... Um, how much comfort can I have? None, because that's the law alone exercising its office without the gospel. And when that happens, there's nothing but death and hell. Right. How do I know that I was sorry enough? I don't. How do I know that I confessed all my sins? I don't. How do I know that I did satisfaction as well as I should have? I don't. I have doubt every step along the way. So I have no assurance that I'm standing or mer have merited 
uh, the gospel. So now I'm just hoping, mm, I hope I did the best I could. And then it's all on me and there's no Jesus. That's why Luther's so mad. And gout. Mostly the gout. We out. <laughs>